G'day, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to start, get started with an Archicad 25 project. So, find where it's installed. Um, I'm using a student version because I'm a high school teacher. Um, when you log in, you'll kind of see this kind of interface. Um, I'd recommend you log in, it'll just kind of keep it up to date. So, I'm signed in. What I'm going to do is click on New, um, Education version. Um, so school students and teachers, um, you need to apply and you get a one year license, which is really, really nice of Graphisoft. And you can keep requesting a new one each each year, uh, for each year they're at school, and it um, works with every version. So let's get started. Create a new pro project, a template. Um, I've only got the Australian select, uh, and by default, mine already had this as ticked. So Australian architectural profile for version 25, and let's click new. So that might take a moment to load. Essentially it's bringing in a library and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you have experience with other versions of ArchiCAD, this looks pretty similar. Not much has moved. Um, but if you're new to it, all good, I'll explain as we go along. So probably what we need to do is, in this video we're going to bring in um, a set of floor plans and put a, a slab down. Um, and I'll show you how to resize so we're working at the right scale. So probably the first thing is to bring in that plan. So on the left hand side in document, and this might be um, not accessible, so just click that and twirl it down. And we need to go to image or figure tool. When you click on this, nothing seems to happen as often in the case with, um, with ArchiCAD. What we need to do is press Control T and that unleashes the magic with pretty much everything that we do. So in this case we need to click on open. I need to find my my house plan. So I've got one here. You can use any plan um, really. If you're able to use this one all the better. Um, so one of the nice things about this house is that it's got dimensions that I can work with. Now you'll see that I've kind of placed it in the middle of these lines. I'll explain, sorry, blue circles. I'll explain what these are later on. Essentially they're to do with section views and elevation views. They're not actual models, they're to help us present um, our, our final product in drawing format later on. Alright, so I've got my plan in, great. Um, I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So I can see that this number here is 13450 millimeters. So what I need to do is make sure that this is actually the right size in ArchiCAD. So on the left hand side in the document, I'm going to get my line tool. I'm going to, going to zoom in so I'm kind of accurate. I'm going to push my, push my scroll wheel down and I can pivot and pan. And I'm just going to click on one edge. Hold down the shift button so it says true. And click on the other side. So it's just left click and I've created this line. Now what I'm going to do is get the arrow tool or I can just press the escape button a few times. I'm going to select my floor plan. I'm going to press control K. And when I press Control K, I'm going to resize. And I'm going to define graphically. So that needs to be ticked if it's not already. And so when I press OK, I need to select two things which to make it graphically. So because I've drawn that line, it's very easy. It'll automatically snap to what I've drawn. And then I can just drag and drop, right? Now, just to the right of my cursor, you'll see that number growing. I need that to say one, three, four, five, zero, which I can just type in directly. And that's the measurement taken from here. I will just press enter and with hope that's just resized. So already we can see that li the line that I've drawn is shorter. So I'll delete that line and I'll just draw another line and just make sure that's that 13450 number. Uh, yep. Great. So I've resized my model correctly, which is a good start. So next what I'm going to do is bring in my slab. Sorry, not my slab, my ground. So I need to go to the mesh tool. And there's a few different ways of making it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do a rectangle, um, but most blocks kind of have some element of difference to them. This is just going to be a basic one for this house for now. Okay. So now that I've drawn this, we can actually start to consider what we have in a 3D perspective. So on the right hand side, we've got the stories and we're working in the ground floor by default, which is good. Section and elevations we'll get to later. I think I'm going to make probably nine videos and this will probably in video eight or nine. But in the 3D area, generic perspective. When I double click this, this is how I get to see 
at a quick glance all my hard work. So far, I've got a bit of land. Congratulations. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my ground floor. Just double clicking uh, is really quick to, to move around. So next what I'm going to do is bring in a slab. So a slab tool looks like this. And again, there's a few different methods of construction. Now in this case, I am going to go this polygonal method so that I can be specific. Uh, because although I could do it just for the overall rectangle, when that comes time to it, I'm going to have a cement backyard and that's not really what we want to have. Okay, so I've got the slab tool uh, selected. So what I'm going to do is just, um, you know, get it so I've got most of my house visible. I don't need to be pedantically accurate, but I want to be, you know, doing a pretty good job. So start drawing. I'm drawing up here. This is the alfresco area. So that's a column. And we want to include this this whole area to be cemented. So we're going to come down here, and I'm just holding the shift button so it, sta it stays pretty true, or at 90 degrees, because houses don't often have random angles happening. And I'm just going to, you know, with a bit of care, trace the outline of this house. I'll go pretty quick. Hopefully you're a little bit more accurate than I am. And again, I'm just holding down the shift button. We can fix this up later on if we need to. And I'm pretty much there. Oh, I've lost a line. Okay, and there's, there's you can see that the grids kind of come up um, on my drawing, which is nice. It'll help me make that. So when I get to the end, it finished automatically. Let's go to the um, 3D view. And I can see my slab, but it's hidden. So the next thing is we need to cut out our slab from our ground. So to do that, couple of things. I need to um, select my ground, but I also need to select my slab. So when I hover over something, I'm given an option of selection. And if I press the tab button, I can cycle through what I'm selecting. I don't want the figure, and it had correctly identified that I want the slab. So I'm going to select that, just left click, and I'm going to hold down the shift button and select my ground as well, my mesh. With both of these two things selected, I'm going to press press back onto that mesh tool and then hold down the space bar and I'm going to click on this slab. Hopefully I'll remove it. So I'm going to click create a hole and I'm going to fit to user ridges. On a flat terrain like this it doesn't matter too much however it can get a little bit interesting when you're, you're playing with elevations so we'll cover that in a later video. Okay so I haven't seen a whole lot of change so let's go to the 3D view and see what's happened. Ah wonderful. So all of a sudden our slab is visible um, and it's cut out of our ground. Um, just as a quick recap, what did I do? Let's do that process again and do a little driveway. So I'm going to use that polygonal method. I'm going to click on this corner. I'm going to come to the edge of my property, about there I guess. I'm going to do a, a, a bit of an interesting shape here. I'm going to come to the corner of my house and I'll come into this corner. So in theory I should have made a, another little slab and I need to do that same process to remove it. Okay, so that was select the slab, hold down the shift button, select the mesh, select the mesh tool, holding down space bar, click in that, that slabbed area and create a hole. Okay, and just double check that that's worked. Awesome. Now it has raised one awkward point. Um, I'm just using my sc scroll wheel push down and now the shift button to pivot. You can see that they're different sizes. It doesn't matter a whole lot. What we can do if we want is we can change the, the um, thickness of this ground so we can make it 2000 instead of 1000 up the top. Right. Similarly we could make it 200 and that's looking flat. It doesn't really matter either way, it's just for, you know, how it looks. Keep in mind that when we're looking at just an isolated block, it's, it looks funny, but if it was a street or a suburb, you wouldn't notice. Um, what we can do is we can select our slab and we can press Control T um, and we can override materials if we want to. I don't recommend that we do that at this point in time. But the other thing that we can do is next to the slab tool is this little arrow appears. And we can click on uh, what is it, floors, and we could put down something specific because right now it's just all generic whatever. So 
might just be worth doing a hundred meter, hundred millimeter concrete slab, and we won't worry about finishing because we'll do our own finishes later on. Okay, so let's do this other one as well. So I'm just pressing the escape button uh, a heap of times. So selecting my other piece, coming over, finding that triangle, making that also the same. Now what this means though, something that is interesting is I can select this slab if I wish, and I can up here make it a lot bigger. Okay. We're only looking at ArchiCAD um, as a modeling tool, not to actually build our house, so we're not too worried about um, throwing away what the actual norms are, okay? But whilst we're working with this, we will stick to the Australian AS1100 standards. All right, so I think this will pretty much finish off this video. What I'd like you to have a go at doing is to bring in the, the um, a footpath to your front door, okay? You might even want to extend somewhere else out in the backyard. Okay, that concludes this video. In our next video, I'll show you how to put in walls, both internal and external, and we might look at doors and windows. Thank you.